Hello all, we are here for the lesson number 36 of this Valleycat training. Uh, this lesson is called Transforming and Copying Solids. Um, this lesson has uh, to do especially with uh, the addition in terms of uh, transformation, physical transformation of a solid or a group of solids uh, translating, rotating, whatever it is and besides this kind of transformation there are other kinds that we are going to see also like the mirror scales, uh, selection of points in, in 3D etc. So without losing more time we are going to call a file to, to act as our example so this time it will be the sample 4 this assembly and we will use this file to show you the items and the commands we want to see so basically to work with this transformation and to show you what is important we need to come to this icon here that says transformation copy edit and constraints we are going to have a lesson a little up front, still on the lessons that remain to be, to be made, uh, about the constraints. So this topic in particular, the constraints, how to work with them, we are going to see on that lesson. So we will see only where to put the constraints regarding the topic of the lesson we are now, but we are not going to see the constraints. Okay, we are going to leave this for a future lesson. So, if we need to transform or copy one element, for example, or several, but let us make a, a general term about this, we go to this icon here, transformations, and then we select what we want. Uh, in this particular case, I will select just one, one solid, it can be this one here, said OK. And now, when I try to do this kind of transformation, I get this toolbar called 3D location. And most of the things we need to see in this lesson are about these options here. OK? So the first option that we have correspond to these black arrows. So you have one arrow for each of the axes and you see down here that basically this repeats over the, 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 for all the options we have here. So we are going to see this in all these examples, in all these uh, different types for one axis because on the other ones it's the same so there is not important to see the same. Okay? So basically first thing is translating by distance, this black Arrow. So translate X, Y, Z, and then we have two more options. This one by distance with a defined vector and a predefined vector. These are the five things we have. So how to work with this? For example, X axis. So click on this. We can say distance here. Let us assume, for example, a little more. 100 if we need to do it negative just make this or again positive do the ok you must see doing this through that toolbar and all the things we are going to see it's the same than using this symbology here with the axis and the rotating and the rotations and so on it's the same so translating by, by distance is the same as clicking on the arrow portion of any of the axes here. Okay, you see th this is highlighted. So in this case, X, do the OK, and you see it was translated on the X axis by 100. Okay, if I click here, I will turn back now minus 100 it's exactly the same no difference so here is the same z is the same and now i have 
translate by distance again, define a vector. And define a vector, this is something, this dialog box is something uh, that will appear in this lesson several times because when we need to make a vector definition, this dialog box appears in our screen. So we can have this vector definition in several ways, like two points, by an axis of rotation, a normal selected plan, a selected axis of uh, a part of a solid, of, of the entire solid, or an axis of a rotation elbow. So, for example, for the two points, we can click and say, uh, for example, two points and click one point, click another complete stupid point and the, the vector defined by this point and the other one I will click defines a vector. Okay, defines a vector and defines the distance. If I don't want to use this distance, I can use, for example, 20 okay but the direction it is used the same so it is like this okay um, this is the two points axis of rotation so if i use one round entity i can have this axis used as vector okay i can use a normal of a plan, a selected plan, for example, you can select plans in Varicad just passing over them, okay, you can use it. So if I use, for example, this plan, you see the normal points on a perpendicular direction. Again, use this and that's it. Um, I can use also part of a solid and this part of a solid is to use one element of the solid. Uh, let me try to find one. Uh, I'm not sure what we have here, but you see this is a complete solid and I can use the axis of one of the branches of the solid. Okay, and I can use any of the axis, for example, Z. Okay, I don't, I don't know exactly where it is, but it can be used. Again, and the last of the entire solid, in this case, the complete part, you see, for example, y, the distance again, this is done. And finally, rotation axis of an elbow, which I don't know if I have one here, probably not, so we are not able to see this part, okay? But I think it was easy to understand the several options we have to make the definition of a vector. So returning again to the same one. So we've seen this for first now predefined vector. It will use the last one that was defined. So I think it's easy to understand also. Um, now we can use the dynamic translation which is the same of clicking in this portion of the axis and this dynamic correspond to these red and black arrows so this one y z vector and predefined vector so let us see just one because the rest is exactly the same so on the x axis again you see now it's dynamic, it's in real time, okay? And you see that I have one drag of one millimeter. Okay, I can click wherever I want, but I can define in this little icon here where it says set dragging increments. I can click and define it translation step and for the rotation the same so i can use let us see for example instead of 10 instead of one sorry put 10 and now if you see the drag now it's 10 each time so we can define here also some 
value for both of these steps, translation and rotation. Now we can use a little down this first area, uh, it is okay. The second area, it's about the rotations. And the rotations, again, we have the rotation by angle. Again, the same idea. One axis, Y, Z, a defined axis and a predefined axis. Okay? It's the exact same thing and correspond to this part of the arrows. Where if I click, I can define something to rotate. So again, let us see this guy here. You can define a value or use these predefined values here. Just click and it will rotate what you set. Okay, very easy also. Um, now I have a portion which is the dynamic rotation. Again, the, the same idea for each one of the axes a defined one and a predefined one and it corresponds to this part this small circular part of this icon here so if I click there again for example Y and I must define a rotation point definition and now you see that I can use this for dynamically rotate it okay very easy also um, I will say escape I will use another one to see the next option here uh, go again to the icon now saying this one here okay and we will rotate uh, we've seen that this rotates what we want but we can add something that is called additional rotation around an axis so I know that I will rotate something about uh, a normal axis dynamically or setting uh, angle no big issue but I can define inside of this an additional rotation that I will make now to say for example 10 degrees and it rotated 10 degrees around the X axis and now I can, for example, rotate it, can be whatever I want, okay, using the angle that I've defined on the additional rotation, I can define now the main rotation for this part, okay, think very easy, also, no big deal. Um, now I we go a little down here and um, we can define uh, besides this definition uh, um, I, I forgot to mention something that is for example in whatever we do we can define this this thing here define and this is valid for um, any of the things I will turn back I think it's easier um, let us use again this part here uh, saying for example a rotation it can be this one uh, we've not seen that in all of this dialog box we are watching now uh, we have the option saying make copies and say okay make for example three copies and if I do the three copies in this particular case you see that it will count besides the original part we are getting it will make three more ones considering the axis I mentioned and considering the angle if I do the OK now I have four parts this is very interesting OK um, I was saying that again the same command saying this part can be other but let us use the same um, I could use something that is called um, setting the direction of of the axis so I can set this and it can be by a predefined vector previously or saying I want to define I have already a X axis defined for this solid but I want to define a vector okay 
Again, I have these options, you know it already. And I, I want to say that the direction is this one. So you see that now it turn me my axis on the point on the on the origin point I had and it rotated to point the X axis on the direction I've defined by the two points. Okay. Uh, for example, I can use the Y as a predefined vector and it will use the exact same because it was the last definition done. So, as you can see, it worked like that. Okay. But I could use also these options here that say in this guy here, uh, I can make this axis of this part according to a solid and I can point which solid it can be for example okay you see that it's a little different and it will make a, a, a little um, representation of the axis of that solid you see for example okay we can use this one okay uh, or I can choose and saying no, I want the axis according just with one part of the solid. So in this case, you've seen already that this here, it had two parts with a different definition. So use it. Okay. And it will work like that. Or simply say all axes according to the world coordinates of the program. Just click it and that's it. So I think it's very very nice function also. Um, for example, we have uh, other kind of commands here that we can call now positioning by a plan. So, for example, I can use this part here and do the OK. And I can come down here and position it like um, the X axis to the normal of something that I must give. So if I click here, uh, now you see that this triangular part, this triangular part has its own definition of axis. And if I start to pass over the solids, okay, you see that my X axis of the, of the triangular part will be according to the X axis of the thing I'm passing over, okay? And if I choose this one, it will make similar, but instead of saying align your axis with the normal, point it, okay? Um, point it against, so it will make the opposite of the thing I was doing. Uh, I can do this on a different way and using these two possibilities here, which is plan to plan and saying, okay, I have this plan of the part I've chosen and I want to align it with this one here. Okay, in this case, it's not possible. Um, but let us say again, for example, I want to use, because it was already aligned, I want to use this plan, I want to align it with this one here, okay? Or I can say here it was plan to plan, here it is normal to normal. So this one here, the normal is pointing here and I want to point on this one, it is pointing out. So it will align it using the original and rotating to put it on the position, okay? So I think it's quite easy also. Um, now I can use other type of functions, this one here below. And the first one, it is something like Boolean operations that we've already seen previously about the, the, the three main operations, add, cut, intersection. And when I'm trying to insert something, I can use these Boolean operations. 
But I, I want to show you something before, uh, because it will be needed to show you. Uh, you see that if, I, if I'm trying to move or inserting a new solid, um, the origin of the solid is positioned somewhere. Okay? Maybe this is not the point I need to properly put this solid on the position I need. So, uh, in any time on this situation, I can come to this icon and say new insertion point and I can use this toolbar to define which is the point I need can be for example this endpoint here and you see that now the origin is positioned on a different point with the same alignment but on a different point and now I can choose to say I want to position this solid here okay for example and I can say point it a little down just to cross this base and so that I can use the boolean and I can use the boolean operations at this moment clicking on this okay and you see that I can do this boolean operation insert and add insert and cut and re repeatedly if I want to insert it or cut it uh, several times but for example insert and add and add to this one and now it is only one solid okay it can be done like this but it can be done also on a different way which is I would choose the same solid uh, it can be done like this it can be inserted and added or cut it or with the definition of constraints. Okay, I will not do it now. As I said, the constraints will be something that we are going to see on a particular lesson. So I just want to show you that if you click here and you say add to this one here, now you can make a definition of the constraints that we will not see now. Okay, but it is here. Um, besides all these options, we have these possibilities here that I want to show you. Uh, I will take this solid a little out so that we can see what we can do with, with it. Sorry, now I made a mistake because I lose the selection. One wrong click, it happened. So click on the on the portion of the axis just saying new insertion point I will use that endpoint here and now I can choose several things to position it but one of the things that I want to show before that are these two little icons here and the third one that is grayed out but if I select one of these it will appear so when I'm trying to insert or translating something I can activate these two things this is the identical copying or just normal copying so if I do now the copying I can insert this guy here and do the OK and you see that the axis remain on the part and I will not take much care just saying again this OK and you see that I'm copying the same element the times I want repeatedly and if I do now the cancel copying it will end this property okay and now if I do the okay the command will be over this is the copy but if I do the the other option I have the identical copying do the okay quite similar to the one I've done a little above okay again OK again and OK again and now cancel the copy and it is done OK so you see that these are very similar things but they have one one big big difference which is these are identical copies these, these are normal copies so one of the things is when I try to change something on a, a on a normal copy if I change this one here 
nothing happens to the to the other that if that they are equal they are not on the same group this is a little different from what happened when i have an uh, identical copy i've done this on this one nothing happened uh, let us see if something happened when i try to do in this one also nothing happened uh, but for example let us try to do a radius okay i'm not sure 0.5 you see that it already select i'm not sure if, if it okay it is small but okay it is small you see that what it happens is on the identical copies is that when i change one of the entities all of the entities of the group are selected okay and change accordingly to what i'm doing uh, this link can be broken if i go to these assemblies and identical copies inside the objects menu and i can use these two commands here the remove solids from identical copies and break identical copy group so if i do these identical copies i can take one of the solids out okay and now if i try to change something let us select this one you see that now this does not uh, uh, it's not selected anymore okay so i can isolate and take one element out or if i go there and say break identical copy group okay i select the group break up yes no more groups are inside the 3d space now everything is split so that property is no longer valid okay so seeing this these options are done okay uh, it is important to mention also this undo that when i'm doing something here okay if i do the undo it will go uh, one operation behind without losing the command okay i think it's easy and we, we've seen this on this main toolbar okay for main operation not inside one operation um, but now it is important to show you how to position these ways we have to position the part when we are waiting for point definition so the first one it is endpoint of an edge so i can click endpoints and now i just select endpoints and click one endpoint okay very easy I can use also the circle or arc center and I can use arc define and it is there. I can use center of gravity of a curve which is something that most of people think that if I have one arc and select this option here it will make me selection of the center it is wrong because center of an arc it's a little different and depends on the shape we have on, on the arc it's different from the center of gravity so don't confuse yourself uh, i can use midpoints so if i choose one midpoint of an edge it will select me i can select this very interesting function halfway between two points for example i want to put it uh, halfway for example of this edge here and this edge here so chosen okay halfway i could choose similar thing which is halfway but on a, a specified distance for example um, first point second point and from first point i can say for example 20 see so for a second it defined a, a, a vector a direction and from the first it will say distance 
very very nice also um, I can choose a point and give a delta okay for example I can say this point here and uh, for example I can say from uh, X it can be for example minus 20 0 0 and it should go to this direction here okay you see a delta um, I can have also a definition of the coordinates uh, considering the world coordinate system of the of the of the program but uh, I would not assume as a very easy and very practical function here okay um, I can have also this definition of the nearest and the nearest is it it allow us to select one edge for example but it will choose the nearest point on the edge we are selecting so you see that my cursor I will click on this position and you see that it was placed on the exact same place I had my cursor um, I can select also a solid element insertion point it's basically the same idea that we've seen already that I have one complete uh, solid but um, I can choose the axis of one of the elements only for example this element and you see that is here okay or I can say the entire solid let us choose okay one different one this one okay um, what it remains to be seen here are these two options the insertion line plan and axis to a plan so line plan you can choose you see that now you can make a definition of a line you can use the exact same fun functions that you have on the on the toolbar that we are working with and I can say for example uh, it can be this guy here for example and the midpoint is here and the plan it can be this so on the point that intersects that plan it is positioned it could be done also basically the same idea but for example one axis that can be this round thing here and saying my plan is this plan here so you see intersection from the axis with the front plan of this area here so I think these um, give you a lot of tools and uh, it allow you to manipulate very easily the insertion of new elements on an assembly or the translation of existing things in your drawings uh, to finish this lesson I would like to show you two more functions that are inside the edit menu and are the mirror and the scale these are very similar to the the same name commands we've seen on the 2d side okay but there are a couple of things we are on 3d environment so there are some things we need to, to see and are with a little different philosophy to work with so first the mirror the purpose is the same okay uh, and we can um, copy one object considering uh, one plan that we can define by these four options as a um, mirror for making the, the the plan for making the mirror sorry so the easiest way is to select one planner surface and if I choose for example this surface here now I can choose the solid and do the OK and I have another solid OK very easy I could do I could do, I will use the icon now uh, I could do this definition by three points it was easy also so and I could select three points wherever they are the only restriction are non-collinear points so I could use for example this point this point 
and this point. What I'm selecting, it's the, in this particular case, it's the exact same selection if I select this plan here. But I'm just using for you to, to see how to deal with this. Okay, you see the plan is the same. Now solid, this guy here, I want, if I want to have more, I can mirror two at the same time. It is done. Okay, very easy. The other options are very similar to the ones we've seen on the on the previous dialog box by one single element axis or the entire solid so i think there is no need to see the same function okay so mirror has this this kind of purpose but you also have the scale and the scale it is something that in several areas like for example injection molds uh, it's very useful and if you are work with parts uh, which we can call family parts equal or very similar but different sizes so the the scale is very interesting for that for that purpose so i can choose one or more solids uh, I can select the scaling point, for example, it can be one of these guys here, and saying which is the value. So if I say 1, scale 1, it will be the same thing as the original. Above 1, it will grow. Above, below 1, it will shrink. So below 1 until 0, it is possible, and above 1 until whatever you you need so for example scale to value it will double your part so the okay considering the base point it is twice the size okay and just to say for example if i want to get my original part instead of two i would say 0.5 which is half and say okay and I have my part on the original side before we've started this command so um, I think we've run out of commands to be seen in this lesson I hope it was clear and uh, I hope to see you in my next lesson